K-pop idols aren't just born. They are made using a precise formula. From maintaining a flawless image inside and out to surviving a rigorous training system, becoming a perfect K-pop idol comes at a cost. Often, they even risk their lives just to achieve that. Let's dive in. Perfect face and body. Let's be real. In the world of K-pop, looking good is practically a must. The idea of beauty may change over time, but one thing remains constant. K-pop idols are undeniably stunning. Some of them hit the genetic jackpot, catching the attention of talent scouts with just a glance. Take Cha Unu, for instance. Fantagio Entertainment couldn't ignore him, even when he was just going to the bathroom. And then there's Sana from Twice, whose beauty got her an audition offer while she was out shopping. There's also the famous story of EXO's Sehun, who was scouted while casually enjoying Tukpaki on the street. Although he initially declined, the SM audition manager persistently pursued him for five minutes just to give him her card. But let's face it, not everyone is born with such striking looks. That's why many companies feel the need to enhance their idols' appearances. To anyone's leader, CL was pressured to alter her appearance due to her distinctive monolids, with suggestions of double eyelid surgery early in her career. Former Mamaland member Jewie shared that she underwent a nose job, which involved transferring cartilage from her ear to her nose. So who foots the bill for all these procedures? Two plastic surgeons and directors of Moon Clinic, a renowned cosmetic treatment facility in Gangnam, explained that agencies often cover the initial expenses for each idol's plastic surgery. However, these costs are later deducted from the idol's paycheck. So while agencies handle the upfront payment, the ultimate cost falls on the idols themselves. And let's not forget, a K-pop idol's look isn't just about their face, their bodies have to be on point too. Here's the secret. To find your ideal weight in the industry, you take your height and subtract 120. So let's say you're 160 centimeters tall, you should weigh around 40 kilograms or even less. Much as it sounds extreme, for some K-pop idols, it's just another day at the office. Take Jang Wonyoung from IVE, for instance. She's a towering 173 centimeters, but weighs in at only 47 kilograms. The pressure to look good on camera is huge. Even if you're perfectly proportional in real life, the camera can distort things. The body gets magnified. You have to be at the point that people around you will say, that girl is too thin, for you to appear pretty on TV. So to hit that dream body and meet their company's standards, many idols have no choice but to follow strict diets. Back when they were with Luna, Yojin and Vivi revealed they survived on just two eggs and half an apple a day. And if they dared to indulge in something like a burger, the staff would swoop in, took away their wallets, and emptied the fridges faster than you can say, hungry. Some idols take things to the extreme. During EXO's growl promotions in 2013, Shumin went on the infamous coffee diet, surviving on caffeine and one meal every other day, just to hit his lowest weight ever, a shocking 53 kilograms. And then there are those who will do anything to kill their appetite. A Pink's Unji, for example, turned to appetite suppressants after facing criticism for her weight, but it backfired. Her throat swelled up, leaving her unable to sing for a while. Skills and rigorous training. But here's the thing, just having the look won't cut it. To survive in this industry, you've got to show your skills. Every year, the K-pop scene witnesses the debut of around 60 to 70 new idol groups. But only a handful manage to stick around and make a name for themselves. Take BTS, for example. Out of all the groups that debuted in 2013, they're the only ones who never had a member lineup change and still active together today. It's a tough reality. Many groups burst onto the scene only to disappear in the blink of an eye. For instance, consider Kiss and Cry. They debuted in January 2014, only to disband just seven months later. Let's face it, not everyone can be like Blackpink or BTS. So what's the key to keeping fans hooked? Talent and skills. While some idols may have natural talent, for most it's about putting in the effort. They undergo hours of rigorous training to hone their vocals and dance skills. Lee Jong Im, a pop culture expert and author of Idol Trainees Sweat and Tears, delves into the inner workings of the heavily structured K-pop industry, giving a rare glimpse into the factory-like idol training system. Instead of stardom happening by mere coincidence, there is tough competition and a great deal of investment. 
she said. A regular day for idol trainees, many of whom are teenagers, is packed with dance and singing practice, often lasting until late at night. They also have classes covering personal development, languages, and musical instruments. It's especially tough for those balancing training with school. 17's Sung Kwan recalls his trainee days when he would practice until dawn, then go to school, and catch up on sleep at lunchtime. Some trainees don't even live in Seoul, so they have to spend extra hours commuting. Baby Monsters Rora had to travel for two hours from her school in Chuncheon to YG headquarters, and she has never been late for training. Not even once. Idols are under scrutiny for their live singing and flawless dancing, so they have to work extra hard to build stamina. TXT members trained by singing while running on treadmills to prepare their stamina for energetic live performances. Meanwhile, Itzy practiced for a whopping eight hours a day until their legs were shaking and they could barely walk. Sometimes they pushed themselves to extremes to make a lasting impression. In his early days, Jun Ho from 2 p.m. practiced acrobatics so intensely that he fainted for two minutes and fractured his spine after falling from a height of two meters. Agencies provide training, but it's not free. Once the young entertainers debuted and start earning, they have to pay back the expenses. Agencies keep account of the travel, meals, housing, food, music videos, and more, and charge their artists for these things until they reached a break-even point. New Jeans managed to clear their debts and start getting paid in just two months, which is amazing. Meanwhile, Treasure member Hyun Suk revealed one of the best things about being a trainee under YG is that there's no trainee debt. The company sees it as an investment, and Treasure debuted without any debt. But not everyone is that lucky. We often hear about idols who have worked for years in the industry and still haven't received a single paycheck because they're still paying off their trainee debts. Singer Yuju, a member of the girl group G-Friend, said she got her first paycheck two years after her debut. AOA, or Ace of Angels, is a well-known girl group from the second generation with hits like Miniskirt, Short Hair, Like a Cat, and Heart Attack. It took them three years just to clear their debts and receive their first paycheck. Surprising many netizens. The most ideal person. You may have the perfect look and all the skills needed to become a great idol, but winning over fans comes down to being the perfect person they admire. Firstly, many fans expect their idols to have squeaky clean image, no smoking allowed. It's not just about staying healthy or protecting your voice, it's about keeping up a good pure image. When pictures of Shiny's own you vaping appeared online, fans were upset and wanted him to return to his innocent and clear image. The same goes for swearing. It's a big no-no. K-pop idols are supposed to be perfect, kind-hearted role models. So if they use a curse word, it can hurt their image. Zero Base One's Kim Ji-ung faced a lot of criticism after a controversy about alleged swearing during a fan call. Though at that time it wasn't proven to be true, fans were quick to rally and sent protest truck to kick him out of the group. And don't even think about dating. If fans find out their favorite idol is in a relationship, it can feel like a betrayal. Take the case of Seventeen's Joshua. One alleged dating post of him and an influencer was enough to spark a huge protest where fans even sent not just protest trucks, but also protest Porsches to parade the streets of Seoul because they believed Joshua bought his alleged girlfriend a Porsche. That's why idols are being cautious from getting involved in dating rumors. Oh My Girls members Mimi and Sunghee even said their label would tell them to turn around and face the wall when passing male idols in hallways at broadcast stations. Your smiles and behavior are even controlled. Former Lovely's member Miju revealed that her company wouldn't allow her to laugh loudly. She could only smile a bit on stage, which eventually made her cheeks sore. Keeping a smile in front of the camera is crucial, even when you're going through struggles and sadness. BTS's V, for instance, had to hide his sadness after losing his grandmother while still putting on a smile during performances. Becoming a K-pop star isn't easy at all. It's like a wild ride full of rules and boundaries. It's a lot to handle, but for now, it's all part of the business. So what's next after reaching stardom? You'll be showered with love so much that it blurs between love and obsession. Get ready to meet Sasengs, the most intense stalkers in the business, and join us as we dive into the unbelievable story of how this idol is stalked by Sasengs for 20 years and lived in constant worry. Or watch these videos of Korean content you may have missed. Subscribe now and don't miss out on these fascinating stories.